Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. We are talking today about gene structure and function. Okay, so just an introduction to this. We know that all living organisms have some common characteristics. We've talked a lot about these uh, characteristics of life already, such as being able to replicate, a reproduction, um, nutrition, growth, interacting with their environments. And so the way that the organism is set up is that we, you know, we're composed of various organs and our organs have specific functions, right? We know, we, we saw the organization, biological levels of organization where organs are made up of tissues, okay? And these tissues are made from cells, okay? So these tissues are aggregates of cells with very similar functions, okay? And so the cell itself, we know, is the fundamental unit of life. It's the basic unit of life for all living things. And so inside of the cell, the cell contains molecules that have fundamental functions for life. And so molecular biology is the branch of science that studies these molecules that are inside of the cell, okay? Particularly the gene, okay? Genes are segments of DNA that encode proteins. And it is these proteins that are responsible for giving cells their function, okay? So we're gonna talk today about the role of the gene in living things, all right? How does the gene influence um, living things? So there are two fundamental molecules within the cell that plays a major role in sustaining life, okay? One of those molecules are nucleotides, okay? We know that nucleotides are the building blocks of DNA. And within this DNA, we have structural units that we call genes, all right? And it's just segments of DNA, okay, that code for proteins. And we're gonna to look today at how we go from the information that's contained in our DNA, okay, these sets of nucleotides, and to actually getting a functional protein product. And so the other fundamental uh, molecule that we require to sustain life are proteins, okay? Proteins are the key component in everything related to life, okay? Because as I said before, we know that the cell is the basic unit of life, but cells get their instructions or functionality from proteins. So these proteins perform fundamental processes within living, for living things using you know, various biochemical reactions. So again, we're gonna look today at how these molecules, this DNA and proteins lead to cell function. So DNA and proteins are two fundamental uh, molecules that are required for sustaining life. Uh, structurally, this is the DNA molecule. And we've already kind of looked at the structure of DNA already. We refer to this structure right here as a double helix, okay? We refer to the structure of DNA as a double helix. And this double helix is formed by, uh, basically it's two strands of nucleotides wound around each other in sort of this helical formation, okay? So collectively, we refer to this structure as a double helix. These uh, two strands of nucleotides, uh, if, so this is sort of a 3D representation, but if we looked at it in sort of a 2D um, appearance, it's just two linear strands of nucleotides, okay? And these lines right here represent our nitrogenous bases that are holding these two strands of nucleotides together. And the nitrogenous bases that are holding these two strands of nucleotide together are, there are four uh, nitrogenous bases that pair in DNA. You should be familiar with them. You've heard of them before, A, T, G, C, adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine, okay? This is what our DNA looks like, all right? So we have our new, uh, linear strands of nucleotides, okay, as the backbone, okay? And then we have our nitrogenous bases together in the middle, keeping this uh, helix together, okay, through hydrogen bonding. 
All right, so we take this information in our DNA. We said we, we've already described the functions of DNA. We did it again in our last unit that the function of DNA is to um, encode proteins. Okay, so it contains the instructions. We say that it has the blueprint for life. That's because it has the information that we need to make our proteins. So there is a concept that we call the central dogma of molecular biology. Write that term down. The central dogma of molecular biology tells us how information flows from that which is contained in our DNA um, all the way down to creating a functional protein product. That is the central dogma of molecular biology. How information contained in our DNA is used to create proteins. Okay. And this, again, this word protein should be very big and bold on your paper because these are the molecules that are uh, responsible for cells, cellular activity, okay, controlling cellular activity. Okay, so we're kind of bringing this story full circle right now, all right? We're saying that the cell is the basic unit of life. All of life's functions is determined by the cell. We know that cells aggregate together to make tissues. Tissues interact together to form organs, and these organs all function together in concert for us to be one functioning organism. Okay, so we're going all the way down to uh, the molecular level today to see how this actually happens. How does the information in our DNA get utilized to make protein? There are two processes that we're going to look at today, okay? The first step in going from DNA to protein is transcription, okay? Transcription is a process by which DNA, okay, is transcribed into this intermediate molecule that we call RNA, okay? So in your notes, you're, you're, you're writing down that transcription is the process in which DNA is converted or transcribed into RNA, okay? And we'll put a pin right there at this RNA and understand that RNA is sort of an intermediate molecule that must be made before we can actually get a protein product being synthesized. So the first process is transcription, okay? DNA is transcribed into RNA. And then RNA serves as a, again, as an important intermediate that we'll call a message. So you'll see the term messenger RNA because this RNA molecule now becomes a message that will be translated or decoded into protein. And that process is called translation, okay? So there are two fundamental processes that must occur in order for us to take the information that's contained in our DNA and get a functional protein product. Transcription and translation. You've probably heard about these processes before. We're gonna take a quick look at them again today. How many of you have heard about transcription and translation before? Anyone? <clears throat> no one? No. No? Okay. No. No problem. Um, by the end of this lesson, you should be able to pull it all together. And uh, yes, I think it probably was, should have been maybe mentioned in high school, even if not um, going into greater detail. All right, so we're going to look at transcription and translation today. So the central dogma of molecular biology is how we understand the flow of um, information from DNA to RNA to protein, okay? So the function of DNA, we've already talked about this before. We say that DNA carries the blueprint for life. That's because the uh, instructions for our genes, like these genes are encoded in our DNA. Okay, they are this DNA is responsible for uh, duplication for new cells. We saw that in the um, unit on like the eukaryotic cell cycle. We saw where a uh, new DNA was being synthesized during S phase. Um, and then and is this DNA okay? The, the information in our DNA is coding for proteins, all right? And these proteins are responsible for biological function. 
All right. Our cells are the activity of and function of our cells are directly um, determined by the pro protein expression profile. Okay, so we're going to understand that by the end of this lesson, all of our cells in our bodies, they all have the same DNA. Okay, the same genome, all the cells in our bodies have the same genome. So how do each of the cells types in our bodies have different functions. That's based on which proteins are expressed at any given time, okay? Not all of the proteins that our DNA encodes for are gonna be um, expressed at the same time in the cell, okay? And so depending on which proteins are active or expressed, we use the term expressed, depending on what proteins are active in the cell, that's gonna dictate the function of that cell, okay? But we're clear that uh, biological activity um, of the cell is determined by our proteins. And our proteins are encoded for in genes, okay? So you have to tie these um, connections. You have to make these connections, okay? So the function of DNA is to really carry- got up. This is my first class of the day. Uh, uh, DNA is said to be the blueprint for life because it encodes for these proteins which are our functional products in a cell. All right. So I mentioned transcription. Okay. Transcription is the first step in this um, quest to produce proteins. Please mute your mics. Transcription takes place where? In the nucleus. All right. We already took a, a good look at the cell. We did a tour of the cell and we identified some, you know, special compartments. Um, one of those is the nucleus. All right. The nucleus houses Maybe DNA. Work for females. Please mute your mic. They like, I don't know. I guess. I mean, they'd be like, you help your pH balance. All right. So transcription takes place inside of the nucleus. All right. Again, remember, transcription is the process of, of us going from DNA to RNA. All right. This sort of intermediate molecule that we have to make before we can actually get our protein. And so what happens during transcription is that DNA transcribes a complementary strand of RNA that we call messenger RNA, right? So we have that strand of nucleotides on top that's going to be our DNA, right? And we know that those nitrogenous bases in that DNA sequence has a uh, complementary um, base that it pairs with, right? And so you'll have one strand of DNA that is used to synthesize a complementary or partnering strand of uh, messenger RNA, all right? That's what's happening during transcription. We take the sequence of DNA and use it to create a complementary strand of RNA that we call the uh, mRNA, this messenger RNA transcript, okay? And so now this sequence of messenger RNA Okay, as the name suggests, becomes a message, okay, for the production of our protein, all right? So we will then take uh, a process of decoding, okay, the sequence of messenger RNA and into amino acids, right? And we know that amino acids are the building blocks of protein. So let's continue to see how that happens. But right now, hopefully you're following me in the first step here, which is transcription where we take the information in our DNA and we create this messenger RNA transcript. And this process takes place in the nucleus. Make sure you note that. Okay, this is just a visual of what's happening. Transcription takes place in the nucleus where we start with this, uh, we have a, in nature, DNA is a double-stranded molecule. So this a double-stranded DNA molecule is um, separated, okay? And denatured, and we get access to these uh, free bases here. And this single-stranded DNA now becomes a template, if you will, for creating a messenger RNA, okay? So we have DNA, we have these genes up here. The process, the process of transcription takes place where DNA is transcribed into RNA. And so then we end up with this messenger RNA transcript. Okay, there's one fundamental difference between uh, mRNA, I'm sorry, between DNA and RNA, 
and that is in the nucleotide sequences. Okay, we talked about the ATGC being present in DNA, okay, but in RNA, the thymine is replaced by U, uracil, okay. So this messenger RNA becomes a uh, template for uh, amino acid assembly, okay? So we would then, as we're moving to our next step, which is translation, where we translate this messenger RNA into protein, we would read these sequences in groups of three, and we call those codons. Okay, so the process of going from DNA to RNA is transcription. We have a messenger RNA that now has to be decoded in order to make our protein. That decoding process basically is us taking the genetic code and reading these sequences in groups of three, which is a codon. Okay, we decode these codons. Each of these sequences of three nucleotides code for an amino acid. And these amino acids will be assembled to uh, create a polypeptide chain, which will be, become our final protein product. So I know I've said a lot here. What you should have grasped from this slide is that the process of transcription starts with DNA serving as a template for the production of a messenger RNA strand. This messenger RNA strand is the intermediate molecule that we need in order to produce a protein. The sequence of nucleotides or bases that are found in this messenger RNA is decoded, okay? We decode them in groups of three that we call a codon. These codons are going to tell us which amino acids are going to be aligned to form our protein. Okay, let's keep moving forward. Ms. London. Yes, ma'am. Um, um, we required to get um COVID nineteen testing, and like it's time for me to go get tested. So, can you like make sure you post a video today for I can finish taking the notes? Will do. I am recording. Okay. Thanks for letting me know. No problem. Okay. All right. So, all right. So we transcribe DNA into RNA. What's next? Translation. Okay. It's a totally different process happening at a totally different location in the cell. So we said translation, transcription takes place in the nucleus. And then once that messenger RNA transcript is made, it is translocated out of the nucleus into the cytoplasm and onto ribosomes. Okay, translation takes place on ribosomes. Proteins are made or synthesized on ribosomes. Okay, that's definitely a point that you learned back when we explored the inside of the cell, right? We said protein synthesis takes place on ribosomes. That is what translation is. So protein synthesis is carried out on ribosomes and what's happening, okay? We use that messenger RNA that's been created, okay? We use that strand of messenger RNA as a template for forming our proteins now. So how do we do that? We decode those codons and we replace them with amino acids, okay? And we have a subsequent chain of amino acids that each of those codons code for. And those chains of amino acids will then become our final protein product, okay? That polypeptide chain, all right? We looked at this back in our unit when we talked about biological molecules, right? And we talked about um, the four macromolecules, carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. And we looked at how um, proteins are formed from uh, sequences of amino acids. That's what's happening here, okay? We're taking the information uh, that's in this messenger RNA and we're assembling our line of amino acids now, okay? Using the genetic code. So we use the genetic code to decode the message that's in messenger RNA to assemble those amino acids, which are the building blocks of proteins. So I'll give you a second to write that down. 
what questions do we have about this information so far? What questions do we have? <clears throat> okay, so looking back here at the big picture, the central dogma tells us that the information contained in DNA is transcribed into RNA, okay? That RNA becomes a template for uh, protein production and during translation, we take the information in our RNA, we decode it using the genetic code, and we replace those codons with amino acids, and those amino acids become our polypeptide chain, which is our protein. All right, so the gene then, how do we take all of that and use it for, uh, uh, for determining the functionality of the cell? All right, we're back to the gene. Okay, the gene is defined as the basic unit of heredity in living things. Physically, the gene is just a sequence of DNA that codes for messenger RNA. And so we're clear that the information that's in contained in each of these genes, each of these sequences of DNA, are coding for specific proteins. Okay, so let's look at the organization of the gene. Gene structure. Most of our genes, in general, the structure is that of, you know, you have a start site, you have your exons and your introns, and we have another, uh, you know, like untranslated regions. So these regions are representing um, sequences of nucleotides, okay? So most of the genes consist of short coding regions that we call exons, okay? So if we look at this image I have here, we have some red regions, okay? These red regions are gonna be sequences of DNA that actually code for proteins. And so what does that tell us? Because we have red and then we have blue. What this picture is illustrating is that the information contained in our DNA, some of it is useful in terms of coding for genes or proteins, and some of it is not, okay? So structurally, there are two uh, types of uh, sequences here. We have coding regions, which are in red, which means that all the uh, DNA sequences here in these red regions will code for a functional protein product. And then we have regions that are not so useful. We call them non-coding regions. So the DNA sequences that are represented in blue in this figure are called introns. And introns are non-coding regions in our DNA. So in your notes right now, we're looking at the general structure of the gene, okay? We have exons, which are coding regions, coding sequences of DNA. And then we have introns. Introns are non-coding sequences in our DNA. They do not code for protein. This is what you should have in your notes. So if you were asked to describe or illustrate or even label um, or, you know, to demonstrate your understanding of the structure of the gene, you would be able to tell me about the composition of these introns and exons, okay? What they are and how they function, okay? If you notice here, we have some gray regions on the ends of our genes. So this whole sequence right here represents a hypothetical gene. And remember, by definition, the gene is just a segment of DNA. And so we have what we call untranslated regions on each end of the genes, in which in these sequences here, as the name suggests, they are not translated or coding for anything, okay? But we have our exons in red, which are our coding sequences. So all of the um, nucleotide sequences in our exon regions are going to code for protein, okay? These introns, by contrast, are non-coding regions. They do not code for protein, okay? And so as the body or the organism is undergoing uh, transcription and translation, there are some processes that go on during translation, which are basically to, excuse me, remove 
or excise these non-coding regions so that we can get a contiguous sequence of a DNA that's coding for protein. So this is just another illustration of gene structure. As I said before, uh, the components of this gene is that we have our exons and introns, but the introns will be removed. So we have our exons, we have our start site, and then throughout the gene, there are different control sites. And we won't go into a whole lot of detail about that, but you'll get that in some of your other courses. But for the sake of understanding, again, how we make our proteins from DNA, we're understanding structurally that we have these exons, which are coding regions, and then we need to have a start site. Okay, and that start site is where translation would actually begin on that gene. Okay. Okay, so how do we get that messenger RNA? We're just taking another quick, uh, deeper look at this decoding process, all right? We go from DNA to messenger RNA by grouping our DNA into um, groups of three uh, nucleotides, and we call those codons, okay? So you've already written down the term codon, okay? Sequences of three nucleotides together are called codons. And we have the genetic code, which uh, delineates amino acids. We use the genetic code to uh, determine which amino acids are going to be in our polypeptide chain by decoding our codons, right? And so in order for translation to begin, there has to be a start codon that signals for the start of translation or protein synthesis. And then there's also a stop codon that indicates that, that that's the end of that gene and translation needs to stop. Um, messenger RNA, like I said, is then going to be modified. Various uh, modifications take place and you know, that messenger RNA travels outside of the nucleus because we're clear that translation doesn't take place inside the nucleus. So if we look at this schematic that I have here, we start with our double-stranded DNA, all right? This DNA, uh, a single strand of DNA will be used as a template for transcription to occur. And transcription is the uh, means by which we transcribe DNA into messenger RNA, okay? That takes place in the nucleus. This messenger RNA strand is made. It is translocated out of the nucleus and onto ribosomes in the cytoplasm, okay? Which is where protein synthesis takes place, okay? Translation takes place on the ribosomes, okay? We have um, the tRNAs transferring in these amino acids according to that, you know, triplet codon. And we end up with a polypeptide chain of amino acids, which will become our protein. So mRNA splicing. I mentioned earlier these two components of the gene. We have our exons and then we have our introns, okay? And remember, this is a gene. So we're talking about a segment of DNA, all right? And I made the point earlier that not all of the information in our DNA is useful or codes for protein, okay? So these striped regions represent our introns, all right? The purple denotes an exon. Exons are the coding regions. This is what we care about, okay? So in the process of um, preparing this mRNA for translation, we have to modify this gene to remove these introns. Okay, so we're going to remove these non-coding regions by a process known as RNA splicing, and we're going to end up with these sequences of contiguous exons that all code for protein. So now we have a nice and healthy messenger RNA that is ready to be translated into protein. So what are you saying, Dr. London? We're saying that once we create this messenger RNA sequence, 
it's not completely ready for um, translation. Okay, this mRNA has to be modified such that we remove these intronic regions, these introns, okay, so that we can get our contiguous exons together and then proceed with translation. So mRNA splicing, write that term down. You need to understand what it is and why it is utilized in molecular biology. Why is this mRNA processing necessary? Splicing. What is splicing? What questions do we have? I don't got none. All right, let's keep going. So, just to recap really quickly, the central dogma of molecular biology tells us that the information that's contained in our DNA is used to make RNA, and then that RNA is translated into protein, okay? So the genetic information is stored in our DNA. We know that, all right? Segments of DNA that encode proteins or other functional products, we call those genes. <laughs> Those gene sequences are transcribed into messenger RNA, right? And that process is called transcription. Then those messenger RNA intermediates that are made will finally be translated into protein. We call that translation. And it is those proteins that are made that perform most of life's functions in the cell. It is these proteins that are dictating cell functionality. And that is how we go from information that's stored in our DNA to having a functional uh, cell to carry out life processes, okay? Transcription and translation is the necessary uh, process to go from having DNA to having a functioning cell. Proteins are the key. Okay, so again, just kind of concluding here, we're wrapping up the genes are in fact the physical and functional units of heredity. We inherit these genes and they are functionally responsible for encoding protein, all right? We know that each gene is located at a particular region on the chromosome. We talked about that last class, the locus, okay? And these genes have very specific ordered sequences of nucleotides, right? And those specific ordered uh, sequences of nucleotides are what's going to encode for protein, all right? Again, this is just another uh, representation of what the gene looks like structurally, right? We have this segment of DNA, and then on both ends, we have these untranslated regions, right, that are going to sort of indicate our start and stop of a gene. And then inside, we have our coding regions, which are in red. Those are our exons. And then we have our non-coding regions, which are introns, right? This is the structure of the gene. All right, we said that once that messenger RNA is created, it has to grow through, go through some additional processing once it leaves the nucleus in order to, uh, it has to go through further processing before translation can begin, okay, to remove those introns. Okay, so again, this is just me uh, representing the information I've already told you a little bit differently. Um, translation is taking place on the ribosomes, and what's happening is that during translation, uh, the cell is using the messenger RNA as a template to make proteins. Okay, 
this process occurs on ribosomes in the cytoplasm of the cell. And we're basically decoding that messenger RNA by uh, replacing each codon within amino acids. Okay, each codon corresponds to one of the uh, 20 amino acids. Okay. And so real quick, the genetic code, okay, we cannot end this without discussing the genetic code. The genetic code describes how a nucleotide sequence of DNA is converted into a protein sequence, okay? That's by way of the codon, okay? So a sequence or a unit of three nucleotides creates a codon. Each codon Okay, each set of three nucleotides, each codon codes for a specific amino acid. We know that the amino acid is the structural component of the protein. Proteins are made by assembling amino acids together. So the genetic code allows us to um, convert that DNA sequence into a protein, okay? So we, organ we, we read it in groups of three nucleotides, and each codon, okay, corresponds to an amino acid. So we use the genetic code to uh, create our protein uh, or this polypeptide chain, all right? There are 20 amino acids that are found in nature, okay? And in our DNA sequence, there are 64 combinations of bases that can arrange into different codons, all right? And again, in your genetics course, and as you continue to move forward, you'll have a lot more opportunity to dive into um, this genetic code. But right now, you need to understand that we use the information in our DNA to create these codons, and these codons are red to assemble our amino acids that make up our protein. So this almighty protein, all right? Proteins are special <coughs> cellular, oh, well, special spe cellular components called ribosomes use the triplet genetic code to translate the nucleotides in a messenger RNA sequence into amino acid sequences of a protein, okay? And there are 20 different amino acids that exist Right, and these proteins are being made by joining together or linking together amino acids in this linear fashion to form that polypeptide chain. Okay, so you'll see the term polypeptide also used synonymously with proteins. Okay, so we have this linear sequence of amino acids that's being made, and that becomes our polypeptide chain. And then we know that the, this polypeptide chain can then undergo various um, conformations, okay? They can uh, create different folds and structures that help to uh, dictate its function, all right? Back in the unit where we talked about biological molecules, we looked at the different um, structures that protein can um, organize into at the primary secondary, tertiary, quaternary structures. And we know that the function of this protein is directly related to uh, its structure, okay? So proteins then are a huge portion of the cell, a huge portion of the cell, okay? We, we already looked at how uh, these proteins have various functions, everything from, you know, influencing structure. Proteins can function as enzymes, they can function as um, receptors, okay, for signal transduction. They can function as hormones. We, we looked at this already, okay? And again, the function of these proteins are directly um, tied to the um, structure that these proteins organize into, okay? So, um, you know, primary, secondary, tertiary structure, we kind of already talked about that. And so this concept of gene expression is where we're going today. Gene expression, okay, uh, the, the translation we stand is the synthesis of this polypeptide chain, polypeptide chain using the genetic code on the messenger RNA as a guide. And so gene expression, okay, which proteins are being expressed at any given time is what's going to be responsible for um, cell function, okay? Gene expression is the link here. <clears throat> 
okay? We know that there are a variety of cell types in our bodies, in various organisms, okay? I already made the point earlier that all of the cells in our bodies, they all have the same genome, okay? All the cells in our bodies all have the same DNA. But depending on which gene gets expressed at any given time is going to determine the function of that cell. So you need to understand that. You need to understand what is gene expression, what is its role in um, sustaining life, okay? Gene expression is responsible for determining the function of the cell, okay? And the cell is the basic unit of life, okay? So without this concept of gene expression, there is no life. Okay, so the various functions of the cells, everything from development, differentiation, metabolic activity, all these things that this, all of these processes that go on in the cell are influenced by its gene expression profile, which genes are being expressed at any given time. So we already mentioned, well, actually, we'll stop here. All right, what questions do we have? What questions do we have? All right. Well, if we don't have any questions, we'll stop here and we will pick up on next week. Um, remember,